Hi, I'm Dr. Paul with Online Chiropractic Marketing Systems and welcome to the Chiropractic Personal Injury Marketing Show. And to the topic today, and it's a hot topic with physicians and chiropractors, is when the personal injury attorneys ask them to reduce their bill. And so we're with a personal injury attorney, Brad Souders, a personal injury attorney right here in Tampa. And uh, he does a very good job with niche marketing for motorcycle injuries. Um, and so that's the topic of today. So uh, hot topic for car. I will tell you up front, this is a really hot topic for chiropractors when they get the attorney to ask them to reduce their bill. Okay, so the question is, is why personal injury attorneys ask the doctors to reduce their fee? So can you give us the 30 seconds on that? Sure. Well, first, the attorney is representing his or her client. And this is one of the duties of the attorney, is to maximize the client's recovery. Right. So from the big perspective, the big picture, I want to get as much money on the table as I possibly can for this client. Makes sense. And then, call it phase two, is closing, and I want to shrink or reduce any liens on that recovery so I can put more of that recovery in the client's pocket. Right. That's, 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 that's my your duty. job. That's gotcha. my job. Makes sense. Okay. And uh, you know, when I first, and when you're new out of school and you get this, these um, requests from attorneys and you're not used to it or heard of it, from our perspective, it, it's like personal and offensive. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that. Sure. And oftentimes I've heard, well, you're asking me to cut my bill, how much are you cutting your bill? Right. Okay. Sounds fair on the surface, right? That's that's what I've heard okay. many times. Right. And I can understand that if I were in their, sh their shoes, I could probably be saying the same, same thing. Okay. Um, but it's a bigger picture than that. Let's go into your pie theory, okay? Let's, let's explain that. First, if I may. Okay. I say it's a bigger picture than that because when the person is saying or reacting that way, they might be forgetting that they've already gotten paid somewhat. They've already been billing. They've already been receiving payments, like in Florida or right. in a no-fault state. And oftentimes, the chiropractic physician is provi providing services and is getting paid 80% in some cases. Right. Or say that's right. what it's supposed to be, okay. and you know it goes month one, month two, and so on. And now we're at month three or four or five or six, and this doctor has received seven thousand dollars of PIP benefits already, right, or more. Okay. So well, that's one perspective. That's a pers That's just <laughs> that's giving you okay. That's something I'd like them to remember. Right. Okay. And um, so they, they definitely are getting the insurance patients, and so it's really about the, you representing the client. Your duty as their, their attorney mm -hmm. is to get as much as. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have anything to do with that that doctor or physician and what their bill is. If their bill is small, you're still going to request it because your duty. It's my duty. It's your duty. Be, um, and it's interesting that I, that I make that point because so many of the doctors are. I mean, we're offended when we get that because here's our perspective is well, we gave that service. That was a true and rendered service that we offered. That's our perspective. Yeah, and does that make sense? Sure, but you know, we're, we're all professionals and we're all supposed to be wearing our business hats. Right. And you're putting patient and client first and you also have to see the big picture. And again, business is about relationships, and you want to be a problem solver. You know, you want to be compassionate for your client or your patient, and and you want to put them first. Now, I'm with you. I'm just sharing with you the thought mm -hmm. processes and mm -hmm. asking for your comment. And the other thing uh, that comes up is they'll say, "Well, there wouldn't even have been a case, or they wouldn't be in the condition they're in if it wasn't for my care." Can can that? Uh, this is really narcissistic, egocentric thinking. Is but this is this is what happens. See the big picture, right? And like you just referenced a minute ago, let's talk about the pie theory. Maybe the person that hit our client only had ten thousand dollars coverage, mm -hmm. and maybe, unfortunately, maybe our client even has a herniated disc. 
and this is a permanent injury he or she is going to have to live with the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And the doctor who's been treating this patient has been billing the patient's PIP carrier and has been getting paid 80% every day throughout treatment. Right. Now when it comes time to close, the attorney doing his absolute best job in this hypothetical case right, right. obtained all the money that was possible, $10,000. Where does, how do you divide up the $10,000? Right. And if the chiropractic physician wants most of that pie after he or she has already collected PIP, then looking at it from that perspective, how does that sound fair? Okay, these are, these are perspectives, and I understand your perspective. Uh, let me give you another perspective. Especially if the attorney takes his minimum fee, and remember, he's not gotten paid by the PIP carrier. Right. And this patient has these other providers, like the MRI provider or others, also with outstanding account balances. Okay. Then if that doctor wants all of his fee, that patient walks away from the closing table with change. No, I'm with you. I'm with or you. I'm with less. you. Yes. Okay. And let's, that that just can't happen. Okay. Let's let's come back to the picture again here. I'm, and again, I'm just coming from the physician standpoint, asking your opinion, because mm -hmm. these are the common thought processes that is what we think. So, what about when the when the when the physician says, "Wait a minute, you why don't if you want me to cut my fee for the services I delivered." then why don't you cut your fee for your services you delivered? Well, first, let's remember, it's, it's, this is, we're not universally talking about every case. Right, you yeah. Know, it's a case-by-case -case basis. True, yeah, we're so, being very general here. Yeah, so sometimes there's no need for reduction. Right. You know, in the, in the best case scenario, everybody gets their account balance paid in full, and the client walks away with a very large check, right. and she's asking me, well, the bank honors such a large check today. Right. Like yesterday. Right, okay. That really happened. But, well, let's, let's, <laughs> <laughs> well, now wait a minute, because now this question invades your space. So sure. let's go, if you don't mind, the question was, um, when the chiropractor says, well, wait a minute, if you want me to reduce my bill, I gave due diligence with my services, why don't you reduce your bill accordingly? Well, I, my answer is, Thank you for asking. <laughs> and let me please point out that I haven't been paid every month for the last five months okay. by the PIP carrier. Okay. And I hope you enjoyed or got your full 80% or got paid by the PIP carriers you were supposed to. Okay. Getting paid your $7,500 or whatever amount that right. was. And what if the chiropractor said? And still, and this, by the time this phone call's happened, I've not had a closing statement yet and we've not even paid my the minimum fee that's been deemed as reasonable. Okay. Which, which by the way, in this ten thousand dollar example case, that fee is only three thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars. Right, right. I'm with you. I'm I'm just going out on a perspective. So what if what if the what's wrong with the chiropractor thinking, well if I'm willing to settle and reduce my bill and accept eighty percent of what my services I rendered, then what's wrong with asking you, the attorney, to reduce your bill to eighty percent? Well, in this hypothetical, you're already looking at the small amount of portion of the settlement that's going to the attorney, a third. Because we're all, in, in the point being, we're already talking about small numbers Correct. to begin with. So, for the person who's pursued this claim and obtained a recovery for the client and is trying to get everybody paid and who's only making the minimum fee or a third right. in this very small pie, he has to do. He has to keep the lights on too. Okay. So you're seeing it as a. We're talking about low numbers anyway, and so you're seeing it as a proportional. Wait a minute. The physician's already got a large portion mm -hmm. of what is very limited to begin with. Is yeah. that a fair statement? Yeah. The physician needs to see the big picture. Okay. Was that a fair statement? Sure. The kind of the sure. perspective. Now, I have doctors that say um, they're worried that they won't get a referral if they don't cut their fee. What's your perspective on that? True in some cases. I know some physicians close by or in town where we've called them and we've said in a situation like this, for client Jane Doe, she had a limited recovery, 
will you reduce or negotiate your bill? And the physician has said, no and heck no. Right. Using heck as an right. insert right. word. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so now that causes me, because I'm probably giving that doctor an LOP, a letter of protection. Right, right. So now that causes me to make some choices. You know, first of all, I've got to tell the client this, and right. the client's not going to be happy. Right. Secondly, I've got to say to the client, if you want to fight this account balance, then we're going to have to put the monies in a, um, action in the court, deposit them, and bring an action for equitable distribution of settlement, and let a judge decide where the settlement monies go. You know, in uh, which is costly because we've got to pay a filing fee. Yeah, you know, in uh, in all the years I've practiced, that has never happened. It happens. Is there? A, that's got to be real rare, though. So it is. It's. It, it is an option for the client. Okay, I'm with you. Um, or, client has to live with that doctor's answer. We have a closing at this table, and that client, unfortunately, walks out with very small settlement monies. Right, okay. Because she was treating with a doctor that was, I, I hate to say the word, but greedy. Well, and it doesn't necessarily have to be greedy. You can have low settlement amounts and high dollar bills, right? Correct. I mean, that's Correct. that's definitely part. Doesn't necessarily have to involve Correct. greed. Correct. You're, you're, that's a good point. Okay. But Let's I would say I would say just inflexible. Okay. Now, last one. I know, and I know we're being general. How? What? You ask a doctor to reduce his fee, and let's say, help me to understand what you would expect besides reduce everything you can. Besides, you know, a, a generic statement like that. Well, I, I'd like the doctor to. If he receives such a request, he or she receives a requ request, go to the file, see what you've already been paid. Okay. And of course, look at your account balance. Okay. And if you've already been paid a lot and you have a small account balance, then a lot of attorneys have an expectancy that you may reduce your bill to 50 or 70 percent. Of the account balance? Correct. Okay, I'm with you. Um, now, another scenario. You look at the chart, you see how much you've been paid, you see your account balance, and you can't make up your, you can't make your decision. You just, you just have a question. You, you, you want to call the attorney and you want to learn some more information. Okay. And the attorney, with the client's permission, can show you what the closing statement will look like, okay. and show you all the terms, right. and show you all the other providers, and right. show you their account balances, or what they would be paid, even on reduced amounts, Okay, and that will equip you to see the big picture, right. and to being a problem solver, and getting this case to the closing table, and getting everybody paid. And without going into dollar amounts, what percentages, if possible, can you say, hey, worst case scenario, there's minimum amount of money, this is the percentage I'd at least like my uh, my client to have. When it, you know, I get paid my third. I'd like my client to at least get X. Is, is that a possible or fair statement? Well, some attorneys will say, uh, using the pie theory, right, that uh, one third for the attorney, one third for the providers, one third for the client. Uh, okay, very good. So, two. If if the doctor was was considering negotiating. Two factors to consider is one, if you've been paid, the amount that you have in accounts receivable, consider reducing that 50 to 75 percent. Is that what I heard? Well, we said look at the amounts you've already been paid, right? But also look at your other column we'll called your account balance. Yeah, and that's what I'm referring. The account balance. Correct. Consider reducing that 50 percent, maybe up to 75 percent, but about 50 percent. That's and general. I'm being very general. general. We're being very general. general. And the other analogy is when you look at the whole picture, if the attorney gets a third, the client gets a third, and the physicians essentially are a third. Physicians. Physicians, right. Correct. And now, and you're including Correct. physicians and diagnostics Correct. and everything medical. Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. And, and again, we're being very general, but it, it, saying that. but it helps to create some mental guidelines and parameters and thought processes. Thank you, you because know. there are cases where we get a lot of money on the table and there's no need for negotiations and medical bills. Everybody gets paid 100%. The client gets a lot of money and everybody's happy. Yeah. And I guess what I'm saying is if I'm a physician and I understand what you just said, and I would look at it and if everybody was getting a third, 
I wouldn't even care about you. So if you sent me, hey, will you reduce your bill? I'm like, no. It kind of worked out the way it should anyway. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a fair statement? I, I, I always think of an analogy. <laughs> I guess that means no. Okay. <laughs> and I apply this in my own life. Uh -huh. uh, a tree. You know how the oak tree and the hurricane doesn't survive? It because it's it not flexible? It right, right. But what about the palm tree? Right. That palm tree is very flexible and it survives. Right. And that's the way I think we should be. We should be flexible. Okay. All right. And so, in, in closing then, it sounds like you would like them to, you're referring clients that you have relationships with. You would like to see them to some degree work with you. Of course. Okay. Yeah, that's the big picture. Okay. Because I did, t I do tell my clients the pe the, the attorneys I work with. I do tell them. I said, number one, one of the rules that I have is when if I'm going to send business referral to an attorney, you don't ask to cut my bill, and I don't ask to cut your bill. Well, I don't think you can go on absolutes like that because there are some cases that present themselves you, with limitations. And you did a good job of explaining it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we covered we covered I thought the topic pretty good. Um, there was certainly some insights that I didn't. You know, it's, like anything, it's harder, and you don't want to look at the other person's perspective as much, and we value ours much more. See the big picture. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, a touchy subject, and the, sop and the topic was um, what to do with when attorneys ask you to cut your bill and how it relates to the big picture. And again, I'm Dr. Paul with Brad Sauters. He's a personal injury attorney right here in Tampa, Florida. And this is uh, the, um, the Chiropractic uh, Personal Injury Marketing Show, and we will see you on the next episode. You take care.